Today, we are going to talk about file and folder structure so that you can find your creative media projects even years down the road. Hey everybody, I'm Brian and this is We Create Your Sunshine, the show that gives you bite-sized tasks that you can do to build and scale your business. And so we're going to talk about file and folder organization today, specifically for your media projects. So I'd love to hear in the comments below, do you have a standardized file and folder structure? Do you have something you picked up uh, from a teammate or a professor or something like that? Or does it depend on the project and everything is different? I'd love to hear what your organizational strategies. Please comment below. You might be thinking to yourself, Brian, I'm a creative. I can't be hampered in by the confines of a folder structure. And while it's not super uh, inspirational, it's not very imaginative, uh, coming up with a structure that makes sense for you and the projects that you work on is critically important. So while it's not you know, the Olympus of imagination for a creative process. Being able to structure and organize our digital files for our creative media projects is very, very important. So you want to be able to organize for backups. That's super important. You want to be able to organize for automation and you want to be able to organize so that you can bring other people into your team or if you decide to outsource, they can find your data quickly and easily. And it's structured the same way, more or less, from one project to the next, from one drive that you fill up to the next, if you're using individual hard drives, um, and so on and so on. Okay, so let's get into it. So this particular folder structure uh, is something that I put together um, on my own. Some of it's from what I learned in school and, and some of the folks that I've worked with over the years. And I've even uh, improved on this by some folks that have put some, some YouTube videos together um, talking about how they uh, organize and pull together their folder structure. So this structure will work whether you're a Mac user or a Windows user, or even if you're a Linux or Unix, uh, you know, uh, media person, that'll work just fine. Uh, how I have uh, this set up, I've got a, a you know dummy folder here called root of drive. You don't have to create a folder called root of drive. Um, that's completely okay. Uh, this is just to signify that this would be a hard drive, a spinning disk or an SSD or something like that. That would be the top level of, of the drive. So if you've got you know an external drive uh, or a storage appliance or something like that, that would be named here, whatever the drive is named. Uh, P drive for projects or, you know, something specific named in Finder um, that would show up here. And then I group my projects by the type of media work that I'm doing. So whether that's for our podcast, that would be under audio. If I'm doing photo retouching for like headshots and stuff like that, that would happen under photo. And then the majority of my projects happen under the video folder. Um, we'll come back up to, to uh, common assets. Um, in, in a little bit here, but I also add a TXT file. I don't make it a Word document. I don't do it. Uh, I don't leave a file there that's associated with a, a specific piece of software um, because um, Office uh, file extensions can change. Uh, and, it, and it could be difficult for somebody to open it up later. And TXT files have been around forever and ever. So in that, I will put, let me open this up and drag it over so that you can see it. Um, you know, I, I'll leave like the uh, a note talking about the drive letter that was associated with that particular system when it was created, when it was on my editing machine, and then the OS that it was built in. Um, not massive, uh, earth-shattering information. You might put, you might want to put some dates in there. Although your files should have dates associated with them. If you have a corruption issue and you get into a data recovery situation, sometimes putting that. In, in, a, in a file might be helpful because some of that data uh, might get lost if the if uh, data tables get messed up on your hard drive. So I usually put a, a, some breadcrumbs in here just to help me. Uh, if I come back to a drive later um, and I'm having problems linking things, sometimes it's associated with the drive letter that was used when uh, the system was created to begin with. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about common assets in a minute. But uh, so this is the top level folder and let's take a look at video here. So 
some people do things in a couple of different ways, right? So if you are a media person that does a lot of billing and you ship things for other clients or you have very specific deadlines, you might follow this calendar model, um, which is when you release a piece of data to a particular uh, person or if it's published as part of a show or released or, or aired, um, it, it might be helpful for you if you do a piece of work and you've invoiced to someone to, to group your media projects by year. Some people do do it that way. And I've mocked it up this way just so you could see it. I generally, on my editing system in my uh, editing studio, do not follow this particular step. But if you do a lot of external billing, this might be helpful for you because you can go into your billing system and say, okay, Studio X, I invoice them for March, you know, for a project that was going to air in April of 2021. So that should be in the in the 2021 folder. Again, I don't particularly follow this, but it might be help, helpful for those of you that are doing consulting work. And then inside of this, I have uh, subfolders named after the particular projects that uh, we're working on at the time. So we have our uh, you know, five-day challenge for our particular training program. We've got bonus materials that we've recorded for our 12-week uh, program for people to launch their businesses and then promotional uh, spots that we've done to say, hey, come participate in our program. And in any one of these, and so I suggest that you name for each particular project. Um, please be specific. Please spell things out. This is an acronym that's actually on our logo, so abbreviate um, uh, intuitively. Uh, don't. It's going to be difficult if you start start searching an entire driver and appliance and you start um, abbreviating, you know, CHG, PROM. Uh, you know, be consistent and name your files and folders uh, intuitively um, because it could be very difficult if I name this BF, CHA, PR, and then I do a root level search because I need to find my five day challenge promotional. Um, I might never find that folder because I didn't name the files and folders in a way that made sense to me for later me to do a search. So what we've got in here is uh, in, in no particular order, we have assets. Um, and inside of assets are uh, anything that you get from someone else in order to build your project, right? So if you work with a graphic designer and they put together a logo uh, that you then plan to animate for lower thirds or a title screen, that could go or should go in the graphics folder. If you are working with an epic an epidemic sound or a pond five or or a composer and they put some music together for you that would go in the music folder um, if you have some photos that you yourself did not take and you're getting it from unsplash or a stock photo site or something like that um, you could put that here uh, sound effects uh, similar, you know, if you're going and, and, and you've got a, a particular sound effect that you've picked up that you yourself have not recorded, uh, that would go here. Uh, and then stock footage, if you need some B-roll of aerial footage of a city or something like that, um, that, that could go in this particular folder. So assets are anything that you pull together uh, and download from other sources in, uh, in order to beef up your project. Documents, uh, inside of documents, or anything associated with the project. This is not your business. Um, this is, these are steps that are taken, uh, steps. These are documents that you gather that have to do with your project. So lookbooks, scripts, uh, uh, storyboard documents, anything like that, that either uh, give you a sense of how the project is supposed to go uh, and or specific files uh, that you might lift copy from in order to put text on a screen. There might be particular copy from a corporate um, client that you're working with or a particular um, title screen you need to put together for a feature you're, you're editing together or something like that. That document will go here under, under documents. Uh, we'll come back to edit data. Um, raw footage. Inside of raw footage, now there's some debate about uh, the subfolders that are in here, but uh, in my particular folder structure, anything with raw are things that I create or record. I generate those things. So raw footage, uh, I use vMix for my uh, studio. Uh, and so uh, vMix 
as a raw footage source or anything that's recorded on this system and then I use you know in my uh, editing suite uh, and import the footage there. If I'm shooting on my Sony a6100 I put it in there. Uh, sometimes we fire up the old Canon T4i and so on and so on. These are camera models or sources. Some folks do not use this folder structure but understand that uh, if you don't group you don't necessarily have to go by vendor, but I would definitely recommend going by particular camera. Like if you've got multiple uh, Canon cameras, um, especially if you're an indie shooter and you're shooting on your own, a lot of cameras name files in a very similar way. And if you've got, if you're starting from scratch and you've got like brand new cameras, and so you've got two and you're doing an A and a B cam, you could very easily have files that are named very closely or even name the same thing and if you start dumping all of that data into one big folder you could overwrite footage from one you know two files that are actually two different angles for the same shoot you could overwrite your footage and not have everything that you recorded um, so I suggest some sort of some sub folder structure here so that you can go through that some advanced editors they've got people that do this work either on set or they've got people that are you know assistant editors or people that are doing rushes um, that that this kind of heavy lifting when it comes to footage is done before it ever gets here and if that's the case um, most of that footage is intuitively named and they've kind of pared down you know what the editor is going to work on so this may not be necessary but if you're doing you know like a smaller shop kind of editing um, it, it might be really helpful for you to put together subfolders um, but I do by model to help me with like formatting and stuff like that and then if I've got an A and a B cam uh, I might put a folder like if I had two Blackmagic cinema cameras I might uh, I would make sure to label those um, as part of my shoot and then I would put you know camera A camera B camera one camera two you know whatever your your naming convention is just so I can keep track uh, it also helps you keep track when you're when you're when you're on location and going through your recording process to make sure did we get all of camera B for day two that folder's empty oh we got to go grab that card and, and get that pulled in so that's raw footage uh, raw sound very very similar if I'm recording with an external recorder I group by recorder and then uh, a lot of those um, uh, recorders they have folders that are built out by date when, when you start to record it it'll, it'll automatically create a folder by date and you can just drop those in there um, so again these are these are files that I record so whether this is if I'm recording dual systems so I've got a camera but I have an external recorder with a mic that's close to me um, I could record that here if I'm doing sound design work um, I could record that and that would go in here as well um, and let's come back here to edit data we'll, we'll do YouTube cards in just a minute um, so here are where I save my project files and um, this is something that I picked up. There was a, a, another uh, editor who put together a tutorial um, that talked about file and folder structure, and this was how they put it. Um, and and I'll, I'll dig up the link to that particular tutorial. You can take a look at that as well. Um, it's very similar in uh, structure. <clears throat> if you have not optimized your system for uh, scratch disks. If you're not using multiple hard drives to st to store caching of different files, um, then it might be helpful for you to put all of those files here in this location. So Adobe products, and, and and you could put in your edit data, you could put your Descript files in here. If you're using Adobe Rush, you could do it that way. If you're doing Final Cut, you could put um, any kind of autosave files in here. Um, these are based on Adobe products. I'm an Adobe person, um, but you can name it after, um, if you're doing Cinema 4D, if you're using DaVinci Resolve, any of those kinds of things, uh, those projects would, would go uh, in here and the, any kind of autosave that, that might happen, you could put those subfolders in here. Now, Adobe products, I, I, I do a belt and suspenders approach when it comes to uh, files and folders. So Adobe has um, an autosave function within it. It will autosave every so often, and there'll be another video talking about strategies about how often you might want to do that. Um, 
And then I also have the project files that I save, that I, I create a new project file based on the day. If I'm making a big, big change to a project, I might revision and in, uh, incrementally up the number version of the manually saved project files so that I can go back to the last autosave, whether that was 10 minutes ago or 30 minutes ago or an hour ago, but also I could go back to yesterday's changes if I need to, or if I made a big, big edit change and then my system crashed, you know, I could go back to, you know, something that happened an hour ago and I didn't lose the whole day's work. Um, so the autosave files go here and then your actual project files, so they like your Premiere project uh, templates. Uh, so I create a, a project template in Premiere Pro with all of my scratch disk settings and, and um, view layouts and stuff like that. I put that together, I save it in a, in a file and I call it like um, Premiere project template and that goes here. When I kick off a new project, I double click on it and then I'll name it whatever the uh, project is. So, you know, this might end up being GYSD uh, project V1 with a date behind it or something uh, to that effect, but that would go here. So these are your edit data files. These are files that you specifically are working on. Um, and then YouTube cards. So if you are putting together uh, particular um, opening title cards or closed title cards um, with uh, screen captures within your editing suite um, and, and or you're using Photoshop or InDesign in order to pull those things together or if you had a, a Canva graphic um, and you were using Canva and exporting it there. Um, I, we're focusing on publishing to YouTube uh, in particular. So any kind of you know InDesign, Photoshop, uh, Illustrator files, those would go here. Any any additional assets that go with those YouTube cards would go here if I had additional graphics that I was importing to work on those projects. Um, and then my exports would happen here as well. You might say that seems like a lot of work to put all, all of that together. What do I do with assets that I use all the time? Our company logo, our theme song for our show all the time, uh, a sound effects library that we paid for and we're going to use those SFX in files on a regular basis. Where do I put those? It seems wasteful to put those in every single project folder. What should I do? Um, fonts that you use all the time or you've got a particular graphic, a motion graphic um, that's like the intro to your show or you know theme song for your, for your podcast or your TV show or your YouTube channel or all of the above. Um, you could put those in the common assets folder and then when you back up the entire drive those common assets come with it. But I would recommend making sure to back up the entire drive and not just the folders um, because if you start putting things in this folder and then you say well I'm just going to back up the you know five day challenge promotional folder. Um, if you start pulling things putting things outside of this folder and you only back up this folder, you're going to have broken links in your project. So make sure to get the entire drive when you back it up. That was a file and folder structure strategy that you could take and use for your particular business as you work on retouching photos, or if you have motion graphics you're working on, or stop motion animation that you would like to use for your particular business. Um, this would be a great way to standardize the folders that you have, whether those folders sit in iCloud or Google Drive or on a local hard drive or on a shared storage device. Maybe you work in a you know small advertising agency or something like that. A standardized folder structure for each of your projects or possibly even your team will help save a whole lot of headaches when it comes to backing things up or automating and scripting processes uh, and or partnering with someone else. So I hope this gave you some ideas to create your own folder structure and we are so excited to be on this journey with you as we walk through uh, practical steps that you can take uh, to scale and build your business. I'm Brian. This is We Create Your Sunshine. We'll see you next time.